Maritime Made on Eastlink is presented by Nova Scotia Business Inc. Working with companies across Nova Scotia to be more successful exporters every step of the way. Tatamagush Ice Creamery has been serving up artisanal small batches of ultra premium ice cream in its namesake town in Nova Scotia for two years. Tatamagush Ice Creamery is all about uh, ultra premium ice cream. We're, we're all about uh, a luxurious, decadent experience. Uh, what makes ice cream premium comes down to a couple factors. Uh, the first being the butterfat content. Uh, to be considered ice cream legally, uh, everything ha ice cream has to have 10% butterfat uh, by law. Most commercial brands would be in that 10 to 12% range. Um, some premium ice creams might be 14. Tatamagush Ice Creamery, we use 18% cream in our, in our ice cream. The second thing is air content or what we call overrun. So all ice cream has to have air whipped into it, otherwise it'd just be a, a frozen block of ice. Uh, but they're gonna be vastly different amounts. And so a commercial brand at a grocery store uh, might have as high as 100 or 120 overrun, which means that half of that tub or up to even 60% of that tub that you're buying is actually air and as little as 40% is ice cream. Uh, with our uh, ice cream, we have a 40% overrun, meaning only 20% of our, our tub is, is uh, air and the rest is ice cream. Today, we're at the company's production facility in Bible Hill. They're making their basic white base. It's used to make most of their ice creams. The owner, Daniel Curran, begins to gather ingredients to make 40 liters of base. He measures refined white sugar and dehydrated skim milk out by the kilograms. Natural stabilizers are added, including guar gum, lambda carrageenan, and locust bean gum. These are very powerful. Only a bit is needed. Finally, pasteurized frozen eggs are measured out by the kilogram. Daniel's father, Gordon, is assisting him. Now the vat pasteurizer, which was washed already, is sanitized again. The beater and drive shaft are put in place. The whole vat is encased in a heated element and has a pump keeping things flowing. A drain spout is assembled. This needs to be attached to make sure nothing pours out until a lever is turned. A spoonful of Sterachine, a dairy sanitizer, is added to a large bucket of water. The chlorine levels are tested, ensuring at least 100 parts per million. This is poured into the pasteurizer four times. The lid is closed and the machine is run for 30 seconds and then left to sit for 10 minutes with the sanitizer. The sanitizer is then flushed into storage buckets to be reused. Three 10-liter bags of Saputo 18% coffee cream are sanitized. After ensuring the valve is closed, each bag is cut open. Daniel uses a spatula to add the frozen egg yolks. The lid is closed again and the vat is turned on. The temperature starts at 6 degrees Celsius and will increase to 40 degrees. Then the dry ingredients are added. The machine churns the base as it cooks and pasteurizes. The process continues until the mixture reaches 85 degrees. Next, the vat pasteurizer begins to cool, bringing the temperature down to 5 degrees Celsius over 20 minutes. The ice cream is left to age overnight. Always loved ice cream as a kid growing up. You know, my summers as a child were driving to Tatamagush to the family uh, cottage, and that always involved a stop at an ice cream shop along the way and on the way home. And, uh, you know, just for me, it's not summer without ice cream. I always love to cook, uh, but uh, I've, my career and uh, most of my life has been spent in the investment industry. Um, and I stumbled upon ice cream, making ice cream, uh, cooking at home one time for a dinner party and uh, really loved it. It was fantastic. In 2019, I started down the road of, of getting ready to, to launch an ice cream business in Tatamagush. Um, I started building out our shop and acquiring equipment and, and launched in 2020. And uh, I, I knew it was the right place to start an ice cream business and that it would do well, but 
it's it's done better than I ever could imagine. It, Tatamagush was famous for Tatamagush butter for, for many years. It was the core industry in Tatamagush uh, that since uh, no longer exists. Uh, our shop, we chose a mini barn for uh, the design uh, because of it, it resembles the original Tatamagush creamery. So I think there's a, definitely a sense of nostalgia there. Next, the batch freezer is moved over to the drain. It's scrubbed and hosed down. Its exterior is squeegeed and left to drip. Dashers are attached to the engine. The dashers will constantly scrape the sides. And a front plate is screwed into place. More dairy sanitizer is made and poured into the machine, sanitizing everything on the inside. This leaks a bit as the machine is not at a cold temperature yet. It's poured out once a cycle is complete. Once the machine is moved back, a four liter eggnog ice cream base is brought out of a five degree fridge. This is similar to the white base we made, but it has more eggs and nutmeg. The batch freezer's max capacity is six liters. A cellophane plastic barrier under the container's lid is removed. The batch freezer's gate is shut and this is poured in. Then 30 grams of bourbon is added. Flavors like this are added at this stage to protect them from the previous heating process. The top is put in place, followed by turning on the beater, and the compression is set to 140 rotations per minute. Then it's left to spin. The dashers consistently scrape the sides and mix for six to eight minutes until the batch is frozen. This will turn into about six liters of ice cream and fill about 12 pints. The pints are labeled by hand. A lever is used to fill them, and when nearly full, a spoon is used, followed by a bang on a countertop to level them out before putting a lid on. Once filled, they're placed in the blast freezer to firm up over two hours. They can remain at minus 24 degrees Fahrenheit for up to two days. We've been fortunate to have an incredible staff who have helped us uh, at our scoop shop as well as here in production. Uh, the production staff is my parents who have been great volunteers and without them I, I couldn't have uh, got to where I am today. Uh, at our scoop shop we hired a, uh, a small group of high school age uh, students who have done a phenomenal job. Uh, they've really taken ownership with that and, and run with it. And um, despite being young, uh, young adults uh, and some of them their first job, they're often giving me great ideas for, for how to, to, to run things or new flavors. And um, I think that's been one of the keys of our success that uh, you know young people in the province may not have a lot of experience, but that doesn't mean they don't have something to contribute and they can be a really valuable part of the team.